the fights last night. Let's talk about uh, Jamal Charlo's fight uh, with Rosario. Um, what did you think of that one? Um, I was very impressed. And I was very impressed because Rosario brought it up a level and Jermel responded in kind. Um, it was it was odd seeing it because I've never seen Jermel show so much respect in a fight and so much patience against a guy. And after the first round, you know, he knocked Rosario down in the first round. And um, Rosario got up immediately, started coming forward. And by the third round, I started getting kind of concerned because Charlo was respecting that power a little bit too much. He was being very cautious, and I could see it on his face. And um, partially that's because Rosario was using his jab very, very well, and his shots were very thudding, and he was play he was he was uh, placing his shots really well. So he came up a couple levels since I last saw him, and um, Charlo just waited it out. Um, one round he didn't really throw punches, and I thought maybe he was giving in or just looking for one big shot, but he got the shot he needed. Um, what do you like most about Charlo uh, when you see him in the ring? You know, he's he's kind of established himself as the best junior middleweight in the world, you know. I mean, what do you see in him? Um, I see a lot of things. Uh, he still has his boxing ability because remember when he was with Ronnie Shields, he was more of a boxer and he had really good feet. And he showed that in this fight. He was, you know, using that ring pretty well and waiting for his opportunities. And, um, you know, under Derek James' tutelage, he began establishing his power, his, his base is a little bit wider, and he can deliver those power shots really well now. So he, he's, a, he's a, um, a more complete fighter now. I think he now is definitely the man at uh, 154. It's just one more title left. And I think the hard fight, he just passed. Two. Um, now let's talk about uh, Rosario. Rosario, he fought tough. You know, he had some moments of success. He stopped them. Um, what, what did you see from him? Why do you think he might have came up short? Um, when he actually did get stopped, I think it was no fault of his own. He just got caught by a very good shot. You know, um, he was covered up. And Charlo touched a jab to the head, to the guard. And then he went down to the body. And I hear a lot of people say it was a solar plex, but – when you watch it in real time, the shot was, you know, around his abdomen. It was a little bit below his solar plex. But I saw a video from someone in the crowd recording it, and the thud of that jab was very, very heavy. And I understand why he reacted the way he did. It was just a perfectly placed shot. But um, Rosario, he, he's a more complete fighter as well than he was in his very last fight when he earned the titles. He, he hides his power now behind the jab. His jab was working pretty well against Charlo. And I think his jab is pretty heavy because Charlo respected it and he didn't jab with him too much. And those power shots just started laying into Charlo to the body and the head. And Charlo had a lot of respect for that man's power in that fight. So he, he's, he's become a better fighter. Um, where, where, what could be next for Charlo? Two, two opponents who kind of popped in my mind would be maybe Erzandi Lara or like Jared Hurt. I mean, Hurt, I mean, what, what do you think? I think I agree. At this point, I think it's just Jermel maybe grabbing that last title and just polishing his resume at 54 and then make his decision if he wants to go up to 160 or not. But right now, he's the man. Jared Hurd would be a big name, you know. Um, if he could get his hands on J-Rock, that would be another big one. Um, like you said, Lara. Um I do know they say Erickson Lubin with his last win, he became the number one mandatory for the winner of this fight. And uh, the way Lubin looked in his last fight, I'm not so sure if he if he's um he's going to be up to par for that for that rematch. Although he did look good a, a fight or two before when he fought Nathaniel Gallimore, but um you know it just depends on where Lubin's mindset is, you know. But um Charlo's looking. <laughs> He, he's the man right now. It's going to be hard to overthrow him. I did. I saw that fight. It was, yeah, I saw the fight. Tell me your view of the fight. Pam, well, my view of the fight was overall, you know, looking at his opponent, uh, he was a game opponent with, um, you know, good power. So, you know, he wasn't set up just to um, have no, no walkover. 
type night, you know. And uh, I mean, he came um, with a uh, with a lot of pressure, you know. And looking uh, early in the fight, um, he wasn't really putting pressure like you know, mad pressure like that. Then several rounds in, he started to put pressure on <clears throat> on him. And uh, you know, I was just like, I'm like, oh shit, is he gonna start breaking? Because you know, as I know myself, that a lot of great um, boxers, when you put mad pressure on them, a lot of them break down. And I'm like, you know, uh, he was already gonna start to take, actually just land, um, do his best in that particular round. And I'm like, oh shit, is he starting to catch up with him? And uh, though, um, you know, Charlo started to um, uh, come along and, you know, uh, anytime he started to do too much, start Char seeing Charlo, backing him up. So he definitely put up a great fight and a great performance. And um, yeah, man, uh, sky's the limit for, for that guy. What do you like about Charlo? Like, you know, from a fighter's perspective, you're a gritty fighter. You know, you've really been in the trenches. You fight hard. I mean, what do you like about Charlo? He seemed to have a real tough attitude in there. Yeah, you know what? What I do like about him is that, um, you know, I actually sparred them some years back um, in Houston. And I came with that gritty style. And it was funny because we actually, uh, we kind of like had a, had a, um, had an exchange of words, you know, because of my style being so greedy, gritty and, uh, you know, in his chest or whatever. And like, we start arguing. And I, I remember he, call, he called me on my name in the ring and I'm like, hey, no suckers in here or something. And we went back and forth, but you know, they always was gritty. They always had that type of, you know, grit. And, you know, going back to your question, um, after seeing Rosario put that pressure on him, a lot of guys kind of start breaking down and start getting hit with more shots. But uh, he actually started to look uh, more ferocious, and he actually uh, dropped him um, like right shortly after he um, Rosario started to put more pressure on him. So you know, um, just going back to your question, man, what I liked about him is that he was able to handle that pressure. He was able to um, make adjustments and. And he made them well, man. And, you know, um, as I mentioned before, you start seeing people's uh, kink in their armor when that pressure comes, you know, and pressure buffs pipes, man. But um, obviously, pipes bust heads because he did good. And, you know, you really know the game. Um, so I really would love to break down um, what did you see? First off, you know, uh, Jermel Charlo stopped Jason Rosario. Uh, did, what do you think of that fight? Um, I really thought it was a good fight. I really thought it, that was a good step up with a hard puncher. And, you know, a lot of people didn't think um, Rosario had decent defense in the saying he get hit too much when he showed good defense. I feel like um, that fight kind of reminded me of the Andre Ward and um, Chad Dawson fight because um, I felt like even though I've I seen this on somebody else's Instagram, but – I didn't think about it. Jason, uh, I think his name Jason Rosario, whatever his name is, Rosario, my man, I feel like he, he should do a better job at cutting the weight because he couldn't really take a shot. You know what I mean? He couldn't even take a shot on a temple, like on a, not even a clean shot. Like, And I remember Andre Ward was hitting Chad Dawson like that, and he was getting hurt, and he was just like, he didn't make no excuses, but I knew it was the weight because he had came down to 168 not even taking that away from uh taking nothing away from charlo nothing because he did what he was supposed to do and even if it wasn't the way i felt like rosario would have still uh did decent it's just that i feel like what made um charlo he just kept hitting him with certain shots and i feel like the reason why is because it's the speed of the timing this is what was catching Rosario off guard because Rosario would be coming out. He'd be in a tight high guard and he'd be like, dop, dop. And then um, Charlo would just counter him so quick, with, but he would time it though. He would go, pop. When Jason um, Rosario would get off, he would go, dop, 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 bang. And then just get hit and because he wasn't really looking to get hit. When you're against the Charlos, bro, you have to look for something coming back. And I learned that from being in the Floyd gym or just watching Floyd and hearing his dad say, hey, don't, you know, don't basically say, don't get too greedy. Always look for something coming back to get your work in. And I noticed that with um, 
with Rosario. It's like he wasn't looking for nothing coming back. And that is a recipe for disaster when you went there with a Charlo. And uh, But besides that, I thought Rosario was strong. He looked good. It was a good test for uh, Jamel. Uh, the only gripe I got, you, if you're saying you've been knowing me for years, you know I'm big on defense because there's a lot of brothers out there to get hurt. They get killed. That's black, white, Mexican, whatever. You know what I mean? And I, that's the part that kind of like, as me being a professional boxer, I always preach defense first because you want to be able to spend your money at the end of the day like my man Floyd. So that that's just what I think about. Other than that, he's uh, you are, hey, he smoked, dude. <laughs> that was a smoke yeah. session. Hold on. What? Charlo, what what impresses you about him? Um, you, you know, what do you like about Charlo? What impressed me is not even what happened in this fight. It's what happened in the Tony Harrison fight. He's he's very determined. You know what I'm saying? He's very determined. He's very determined, bro. His determination, his will to win, and stay focused. No matter what is going on, if they talking. Whatever he stays focused the whole, the whole twelve, and that and that's something I also learned from Floyd Mayweather. Man, you got to keep your eye on the prize, for real. And Dre, Andre Ward, being in his gym working, getting work. You know what I mean? So his determination, not skill, because <clears throat> I feel like it don't start with skill first. It start with your mental, and on my channel. We call it a mental spiritual because you can't really see a mental. It's it's you can't see it. You know what I mean? It's subjective. So I feel like his 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 mental is what makes him strong so that he can be determined because if you're not mentally strong, ain't no determination, bro. Well, my since I've been knowing him since I met let's start like in the beginning. See, I met the Charlos. I met them guys when I was down with one DS in one DS training camp. Um those guys, they treated me like I was their brother, you know, like I was family. Everywhere they went, I'm down there for two months. I was with them the whole entire time. So to see them, to see him, to see Jamel, um, the way Jamel fought him was smart because he knew one of the biggest things, um, Rosario was going to come. He was going to come forward. And, and people don't understand when you come in forward, when you're chasing somebody, it actually slows you down. It's, you know, you take you're actually a step later because it's easy for me to move around. But if I have to chase you down now, I'm actually a step behind him, man. Rosario kept Rosario didn't make no adjustment. He was spot, you know, the fight got interesting, you know, it got interesting. Cause like in the first round, the first round I didn't count that as a knockdown because Rosario slipped out the ring. His foot, you know, it was a good hit, but his foot fell out the ring. That would cause the knockdown. But you know, I don't know if the ref seen it or not. I guess he didn't because it counts as a knockdown. But um he didn't adjust as in cutting the ring off. But other than that, the fight was real good. He was sticking to moving. Um, Jermaine was sticking to moving like he was supposed to, as I said before. Man, when you um when you have somebody, when you're sticking to moving, it's easier to do that than chasing somebody down. Charlos uh, Rosario, um, what did you think of Charlos' performance? I felt like he was uh you know, definitely getting the, to like, you know, map them out. I felt like uh, it was a perfect time of the stoppage. Uh, I felt like he was kind of like fading and fading out a little bit. Um, but he, you know, he came out, he came out that round strong and that's what this, that's what this game is about. You know, so it's not how you start, it's how you finish. As a fellow fighter, what do you appreciate about Jermel Charlo? Man, that's funny that you asked me that, man. I've been saying that a lot about these cats, man. What they bring to the table, uh, a little bit different than all these other guys rather than skills is attitude. You know what I'm saying? They got some, they got a, uh, they got a real uh, healthy chip on their shoulder and it's working for them. You know what I'm saying? They, they got something to prove and uh, I think that they've proven that right now. It's definitely, that's what I think that the Charlotte Brothers has against all the other fighters right now is uh, that nasty raw, you know, I'm coming after you attitude. I think I appreciate that. <laughs> Got you. And uh, the fight with Rosario is interesting. You know, he, he kind of, he boxed him. You know, he boxed his way to success. He used his jab and then he broke him down. It, it, it was a good competitive fight. Rosario fought hard. I mean, what did you think about just how the fight played out? I, I think that uh, he, I think he 
think they the team definitely wants to go to distance. I, I don't I didn't I didn't see anybody thinking uh it was gonna uh happen the way it happened, a body shot knockout. Um if anything a, a face shot, you know what I'm saying, something like that, or even go to distance. But I think uh, Rosario, Rosario was doing a good job. He, he was boxing real good. He was applying real good pressure on Charlo. You know what I'm saying? And, and a dog, that is, that's going to turn the dog on anyway. So I think that uh, Derrick James, I think that they, I think he told him that's something really good uh, in, in between the rounds that kind of uh, educated him to do what he needed to do. Uh, I think it was, it was definitely a good fight for boxing. And shout out to Rosario, man. He, you know what I'm saying? He, he a champ. You know what I'm saying? He unified, he, he beat William, and uh, he tried to, you know, uh, you know, defend his belt. But hey, man, <laughs> Inshallah Brothers is hungry, man. For real.